As early as 1823, driven by poverty, Chinese immigrants traveled to Singapore to seek greener pastures. Soon, they had families and settled down. However, due to the economic state and other reasons, many of their children, especially girls, were given away at birth. Most of them grew up in Indian or Malay families, which marked the first of its kind interracial adoption in Malaya. Sadly, there is no official data or records on these Chinese adoptees. While some were lucky enough to find their birth parents, many are still hoping to connect with their long-lost relatives while they still have time. I thought I was Malay all the way until I was 13. And my mother suddenly broke the, the news that, hey, by the way, uh, you're half Chinese at the market carrying, you know, barang barang. I'm like, oh, excuse me, what? That was random. After I found out um, I was, you know, this half Chinese person at 13, it helped me join the dots backwards a little bit. People kept asking me, is your mom Chinese? And I, said, I, and I always get very, you know, uh, intrigued by that because I knew I grew up in a Malay family. We spoke Malay, we spoke English. When my mom found out about uh, the fact that she was adopted and a Chinese baby adopted into a Malay family at that. She was 12. She had come back from school because the teacher had said, OK, I'm going to need you to bring your birth certificates to school. It's time to register for your IC. And at the time, it was at P6. So when she told my grandfather that she was supposed to bring her birth cert to school, uh, my grandfather panicked a bit <laughs> and said, uh, no, 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 I, I will give it to the teacher myself. Uh, I don't want you to lose this. It's a very important piece of paper. You can't replace it. So he did. Uh, my mom didn't suspect anything, thinking that, you know, it's just him wanting to be protective, right? Um, so he gave it to the teacher and told the teacher, when you're done with this paper, call me. I will come pick it up because I don't want you to give it to her. She's not supposed to know. <laughs> and the teacher forgot, so the teacher gave back that birth certificate that said, Go Soi Lake Dio Chu, you know, uh, Fisher Street and, and all of that to, to my mother. And she went, Well, uh, this is not mine. You sure you gave me the wrong piece of paper, the wrong birth cert? Uh, so she had known all her life that her name was Salama Binti Abu Bakar, race Melayu, uh, address 39 Jalan Sudin, you know. Nobody really wanted to talk about adoption at that point. I think they didn't want children to feel um, sad or unwanted. So my grandparents uh, skirted around the topic, and I think that, that affected my mom. Mm. Her elder sister, who was their biological child, kind of felt sorry for her and told her, you know, I remember you were very, very young. You were a baby. You were literally, you know, a newborn. When you came home, uh, Bart came home with you. That was what they called my grandfather. And Bart said that you would be my sister. And I remember there was one day this old man, Chinese man, uh, he, he was very poor, he was wearing shorts and, and uh, raggedy singlet, lots of holes, you know. He uh, looked like he came from a very hard life. And if it was, uh, know that it wasn't because you were not wanted. It was because they had a very hard life and they couldn't afford to feed you. So that's why they gave you away. When my grandparents passed, my dad did ask her, you know, because at that time I think um, they didn't want to do it any earlier. They didn't want to sort of offend my grandparents. Um, my mom was quite ambivalent about it, to be honest. 
Uh, so my dad took her to look for the address on her, her original birth cert, only to find that the road doesn't exist anymore. It's in the Amoy Street area today, but th th there's just no remnants of, of what was left. And so when it ended there, my, you know, my siblings and I, we went, you know, do you want to take this further? We could go to the papers, we could ask journalists around, you know, to help. And she said, no, 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 no. She doesn't really like um, attention very much, so she didn't want to make a fuss. Mm. So till today, she's, she's still, you know, not, not very uh, keen to do that. I think this whole richness of interracial adoption creates this very unique tapestry for Singapore's cultural heritage. And I begin to see that, you know, it's not just very distinct strands of, of a race, you know, like Chinese, Indian, Malay, Indian. it's not parallel tracks, but I think we're interwoven in such a way that we haven't fully understood this because I don't see enough empirical data or research being done in, in this particular field of interracial adoption in Singapore. And I've tried since, you know, since we were working on the book like 13 years ago to see if there was anyone working on it and there isn't. So till today we hear a lot of anecdotes, you know, many, many, many anecdotes. So it's not complete yet, I feel. I always feel that this is an unfinished piece of business. If you're looking for your long-lost relatives or wish to connect with them, send us your stories or share them at our Facebook page, Born Chinese, Raised Differently. We hope that through this small initiative, we can help to connect families and renew ties.